do school work. What kind of activities do we have? If we don't have activities, it's not a community. Um, um, one prominent kind of activities you will see in the occupied area is artistic creations. Um, um, that's the Lennon Wall. I think it's modeled after the Lennon Wall in the Occupy Wall Street, I think. Uh, for people, you can write anything there. Okay. Um, uh, 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 um, you can yell at the government. You could say what, how I wish Hong Kong would be, and you know. So, so uh, it's become a, a, um, uh, yeah, a major tourist spot in there. Um, uh, people built a statue of the person holding an, a yellow umbrella to signify, you know, uh, what happened. Um, uh, there are more than one painters. And they, one of them, they were interviewed, he's actually trying to record history. So he painted and painted uh, what's happening uh, at the occupied area. Um, there are graffiti art on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the street as well. In fact, one of the little girls, like she is like 14, she was doing graffiti art and she was arrested by police for uh, public... The, uh, the, the, the charge was uh, she's vandalizing public um, utilities, <laughs> it's just, uh, but just by drawing on the street. Um, of course, uh, there are exhibitions of various kinds, and of course, being the umbrella movement, there are different arts related to umbrellas as well, um, such as these uh, models of protesters, 3D arts, miniature models, and so on. Um, this guy invited people to sign on his car, <laughs> his very nice car. Okay. Um, uh, of course, there are various what I call educational activities as well. Um, there are crafts workshops to teach people how to make leather crafts or ribbons and, and so on. Um, democracy University, they would invite professors from university to talk about democracy and all the theories behind and so on. There are forums and sharing sessions. Essentially, it's like Hyde Park in England. You could just go there, grab the mic, and you can say whatever you like. Now, whether our people like what you say is a different story. Okay, um, um, every night there's a so-called night assembly. Um, uh, essentially, anybody could go up there to say what you want as well. Although they are organizers, um, everything is free. Um, all the crafts and souvenirs, you just go there and grab it. Um, these are the things that I, I, I my wife like. Um, Hannah paintings as well. Posters, food contributions, okay? Um, I was sitting at the tent, all of a sudden, a, a person walked by me and asked, hey, do you want an apple? Really, I, I didn't ask, I was just sitting there. And actually, there are different stations throughout the entire occupied area where you could just get food, soup, rice boxes, and, and so on. And there was this little kid, you know, she, he, uh, she, he was holding a sign telling people that, you know, my grandma has made a soup, please go there. And and try um, T-shirt painting, um, uh, 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 local singers, they would perform, and also amateur singers, and all kinds of performances and artistic creations in the occupied area as well. Um, oh, before I talk about that. The thing is, many of the things that I talk about has nothing to do, in some sense, with the umbrella movement. Has nothing to do with the political ideologies that we are asking for. I, to be honest, I don't know why, why all these are happening in there as well. Okay? But all these, uh, they have become history. Okay? Um, as, as, you, as you remember, on December the 11th, the place was clear. And I returned there um, uh, 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 a few days later. That was, that used to be the occupied area. Okay? It's now, you know, cars are running. Uh, that was the highway. Okay? Um, yeah. So what happened afterwards? Okay. Um, well, um, I'm not sure whether you, you noticed uh, many of the pictures was photo by a guy called Jimmy Lamb. Uh, this guy, not me. <laughs> okay. um, this guy, he actually took picture at the Occupy movement uh, in the Occupy area every day. And then he assembled this photo album that weighed seven pounds, okay? 
he printed it using his own money and sell it to other people. And my wife bought three copies, um, you know, one for ourselves and the other one for as gift to other people. Um, uh, I think over a hundred photo albums and books were written and published uh, to talk about the Occupy movement. Um, there were exhibitions of the artifacts that were co collected, not destroyed by the, by the police. Um, there were, because of the Occupy movement, uh, many new political groups or professional groups were formed. Uh, in fact, in the latest uh, district council election, you know, some of these groups, they are already you know, beginning to participate. Okay? Now, but, but, but people were saying, we have to wait for the next legislative council election before we know whether they are they could be a real force in the, in the political arena in Hong Kong. Um, and of course, um, um, I think it's the same thing in the United States right now. We talk about youth power, right? We ask young people to register as a voter. And we have doubled the number of uh, young voters in Hong Kong after the umbrella movement. So we'll see what's happening. Now, of course, these are maybe some of the good things uh, that happened after the Occupy movement. And of course, uh, um, uh, right after the umbrella movement, uh, I think that the, the, the freedom of uh, expression and our ma uh, media, uh, the, the, the government essentially is placing a lot more control, tighter control on our media. Uh, and in fact, um, things are not getting better. I'm not sure whether you heard of this Lee Bo incident. Okay, uh, what happened was uh, he's the owner of a bookstore um, in Hong Kong. This bookstore um, is actually not famous at all. Especially, it's not famous at least for Hong Kong people. It might be famous for many of the visitors from the mainland because um, uh, this bookstore would sell books that are otherwise banned in the mainland China. Okay, they talk about mainland politics. They talk about you know all kinds of things about the mainland. So many mainland tourists like to go to this bookstore to buy things. So um, 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 from last October until January this year, within four months, okay. Five persons from this bookstore disappeared, okay? And Lee Bo was the last person dis to disappear. He disappeared in Hong Kong, okay? But after he, and then of course his wife reported to the police and they realized that his travel document was at home. The Hong Kong government did not have any record of Lee Bo exiting Hong Kong. And then, Three weeks later, he mysteriously appeared in the mainland China, telling people that I am all right. Don't worry about me. I do not want to see the Hong Kong police. I'm just I I return to the mainland China using my own way to help the mainland authority to investigate on a case. Okay. Now, how about the other four persons? One guy he was traveling in Thailand on vacation, um, and uh, again he uh, mysteriously a few weeks uh, two. Uh, Two weeks ago, he appeared on Chinese TV uh, saying that he was involved in a traffic accident eight years ago and he's very remorseful and he's willing to take up the responsibility. Again, there's no record of him leaving Thailand, but he's now in China. And the other three guys, they were working in China before they disappeared. And as of two days ago, the Chinese government already uh, pronounced that these guys they have they are involved in some criminal activities in mainland China, but the problem is Lee Bo's case happened in Hong Kong. So is it really the mainland police coming to Hong Kong to uh, to work? Uh, we still don't know. Okay, but uh, the Chinese government is 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 taking a, a fairly hardliner stand in this case right now. Um, this is what happened at the. Uh, at the end of the umbrella movement, people said it is just the beginning. Okay, but what kind of beginning are we talking about? Um, are we back to square one, or are we at the beginning of something even bigger? I I think Hong Kong is really in a crossroad right now. Um, I cannot speak for other people, but I feel tired. I feel helpless. I feel very frustrated as well. Uh, I really don't know where the future is taking us to. So uh, should we go here, go there? Uh, where is the road to, to success? I, I really don't know. Um, 
now I bring you to the topic of utopia. Um, uh, as I said earlier, I think everybody has a utopia in their, in their heart. Um, everybody's looking for their utopia. I don't know what your utopia is, but as I mentioned, what's happening inside the, uh, the occupied area in the last two and a half months, they are not really, not all the activities are political. You know what I'm saying? It's a new way of life for many Hong Kong people. Is that the kind of utopia that Hong Kong people are looking for? I really don't know. Um, uh, uh, so I would like to end my presentation with uh, uh, two passages. Um, someday we will find what we're looking for, or maybe we won't. But maybe we will find something much greater than that. Uh, this one, the other one is, I found it uh, with the, uh, when I was looking for image of the yellow umbrella. Um, you can read it. Uh, for yourself, but essentially is saying that do we understand what life is going to bring us? We are just maybe a tiny, tiny boat in the great machinery of life. Um, and I think maybe this mentality is shared by many Hong Kong people right now. And, uh, and I would like to stop here. Thank you very much. We always think of our uh, programs as a dialogue, so we'd like to open the floor for some comments and questions. Uh, anything you'd like to ask uh, Jimmy about that? I want to say thank you very much. Uh, as you described it to me the other day, it's a personal sharing, and I think that's really uh, exactly what you delivered. Um, it really helps all of us who are reading about the event from afar. Uh, to feel as though we were there and to, to get much deeper than a newspaper or a magazine article or a CNN uh, piece on, on the event. Um, I think I will just open and would love to hear what people think or questions for Jimmy. Um, my question is about um, migration. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the question of what kind of dictates the world that we live in. I was wondering if you could say something. Um, you've talked about your <coughs> born in Hong Kong in the 60s, educated in Canada, and returning. So you have a particular journey, I, mm -hmm. I think, behind your story mm -hmm. and your experience. And then your wife and your sister-in-law probably are the same generation. Yeah. We heard the students who are representing university students. And I was wondering if you would want to, if you think it's important for foreigners uh, to understand Hong Kong's utopia and its future, if you, you might want to say something about these waves of migration mm -hmm. into Hong Kong. Um, I was lucky, I don't know, I was born, I mean, I, I, I lived through all those years when there was a big influx of people, Hong Kong people emigrating to other places. In fact, when I was doing my, my study, I, I was in Canada from 1982 to 1992. That was really the time when, you know, um, we would have many farewell dinners with our friends and relatives because, you know, the next day they are moving to Canada or to the UK and, um, and, and to, you know, many different places. And I was in Canada for 10 years, okay? Um, um, and then I returned to Hong Kong for my job interview. And uh, one of the questions that was asked of me, not an official question, but, you know, they, they asked me, hey, Jimmy, do you have a... Canadian passport. Um, I said no. I, I I don't have a Canadian passport because you know um, I was there for ten years. But from day one, I, I told myself I wanted to return to my motherland because I, I I love the place so dearly. I would like to be able to contribute. You know, after all, I'm receiving all this education. I would like to return there to contribute. And so I didn't have a um, a passport. And I'm holding a Hong Kong passport. Uh, and then my colleagues they were. But well, at that time, my future colleagues, okay, uh, they look at me as if I was a the dumbest person on earth. And then, of course, and then I look around.